Dr. Bones, Dr. Bones, Dr. Bones. Right on, and here we are on a Monday afternoon, uh, Monday evening in the UK. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had you guys on the show. Welcome back, Joe Symes and Loving Kind. Hey, how's it going? Very well, guys. Happy to have you back. It's been it's been quite a bit. I mean, uh, Colin, you and I chat on Facebook semi regularly, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I haven't. Uh, we haven't talked in a long time. So first and foremost, you guys have a new EP co- coming out called Acoustic Variations, and uh, there's a couple songs from the from your full length or your debut album that you did acoustically uh there's i'm gonna find out someday and uh fine line now what's after doing the full length album did you guys kind of take a break from plugging in decide you want to do acoustic kind of change things up a little bit not really no um well obviously we're, we're within the process of um doing well we started to record our second album which um unlike the first album is basically going to be an out and out like catchy rock album really uh the EP came about kind of unplanned and unexpected. A friend of ours, who's been kind of itching just to like do some recording with us for quite a while, just said, well, um, you know, and he designed our website too. Um, he just said, well, he's a producer from Liverpool. Yeah, he just said, basically, you know, I, I, do you want to just come down and just record a couple of things, just acoustically and stuff and all that? And I kind of said, well, you know, it would have been pointless with just going down there recording some stuff and not doing anything with it. It just would have been a waste of time. So I kind of suggested, so well, why don't we maybe like, you know, do four tracks as like an EP to put out in the meantime while people are waiting for the next album. So obviously because it was acoustic, we thought, well, okay, maybe let's like show that all of us, you know, we can like tone certain songs down and do them in different ways. So obviously we've done Fine Line, which is off the first album. But I'm going to find out someday, which was the double A side, with things get better off the last standalone single. And obviously, it's a bit of a treat for like the fans. We kind of put um, two brand new exclusive tracks on there that, that haven't been on anything else before, and aren't going to be on anything else in the future. And they're exclusive just to that release. So we just thought, well, we'll do that. Just get get it all together, and and it all, it came together very very quickly. It was basically almost too easy. You know, we got like the artwork done and everything, which we done ourselves and got got everything sorted. It was all mixed uh, and mastered very quickly. Um, so basically, we just thought, like, begin of the new year, just put that out, and then obviously we can continue to do work on the new album, which should be out later in the year. So yeah, that's that's how it came about, really. All right. I mean, and it does give you guys a quick break and uh, kind of we'll see. We keep fans of the base the wrong word, but keep them uh, interested and in, in waiting for the next stuff. Just because, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it, and it is a little different uh, when, I, when I first heard it. I mean, because obviously I'm used to the, the, the plugged-in version of it, but I, I really enjoyed both versions. It's one of those things that's a toss-up to, to kind of a, a which one I appreciate more, because both are obviously uh, well done in their, in their own way. Obviously one being acoustic, other being electric, but it just really, I got a good response because I, I debuted uh, this past Saturday on my new music show and got a, a huge response to it. And people saying that they really liked it. Cool. That's very, very nice. Very it's good. Not, it's not the point that like we haven't like been doing stuff because we have. I mean, we took the album and like we've done the single. And we've just been playing gigs and gigs and loads and gigs. So we've been writing and rehearsing and stuff and all that sort of thing. We've just done the EP and now we're doing the album. So it's like, you know, a few people, a few people have been saying, when's the album? So we're going back 
to the Shido to record it. We're actually recording it in Peter Gable's Shido in Oxford in the UK. So it's going to be totally the other end of the debut album. It's an out and out rocker that we catch you pop songs on. But it's great the response to, you got from the track that you played. Cheers. Well, have you, have you found, well, even though the acoustic EP was kind of. Uh, Finish relatively quickly. Um, with the in between, are you guys, have you guys? Do you guys constantly record and practice? Are you constantly gigging? I mean, how does how's that dynamic kind of changed a little bit from the last time we talked? Because it's been it's been about a year and a bit, almost two years. Well, we're now a three piece, which is a lot better. Um, we haven't got band members who might throw the rattles out of the pram, so to speak. <laughs> um, it's a bit better. So we've been writing loads and loads of new stuff, which could be on the new album. With the last game we played in December, we, we put two brand new songs into the set. So, we just keep going, as you're probably aware of, you see on Facebook and stuff. The acoustic EP, Pete Meyer, Master DP, and he's recently worked with U2, the Pixies, REM. He actually mastered the DP for us for free. Oh, cool, I know. Yeah. Now, do you have, uh, or will, are you going to be promoting uh, the, the acoustic EP, or is this just kind of give you guys a break so you can work on the new album? Um, well, no, because there's, there's all kinds of reviews coming in for it as we speak, and it's not even being released yet. Because people have asked, like, can we, like, you know, we preview, like, you know, review the EP prior to release. So we've just had two really good reviews come through this week, where they like, basically, like, the day after each other, and there's a load more that's going to be coming through from around the world and stuff, and it's been really, really great. So now Pete Mile actually loved the EP. He said they were fantastic tracks as well. Well, you know what? I did read uh, the one that you posted actually on Saturday, and uh, that was that was quite the glowing review. And it was nice yeah. because I mean he kind of backtracked a little bit and talked about like the de- debut album and how it's kind of come yeah. along, what you guys are doing now. And uh, I might have asked you the last time, I'm not sure, but what, jo- the choice going to the three piece, was that kind of like, we'll say, an executive decision, or was it just kind of came about saying, you know what, it'd be a lot easier, a lot less of a headache if we do it this way? Um, well, two previous members that were in the band, um, they kind of had other commitments, they were uh, become parents, so they couldn't really commit. So basically, the nucleus of the band has always been me and Colin anyway. Right. You know, so we just said, look, we're going to carry on. And then, you know, we got Andy in, who's, he was now on bass. And he, he was with really us only about a couple of weeks and we started playing gigs. So it's worked out really nice. And also, there's a lot more room for the band, if you get what I mean, to take it. You know, we don't have to consult a lot of the people, in my opinion. You know, we, we had management as well, which is like we parted terms with. Because I, myself, Percy, thought he meant to a thing for us and to be honest with you we we've done better without them right especially last year we've done a lot more without management so we are self-managed and i'd rather keep it that way to be honest with you well fair enough i mean you you know what works best for you guys so i mean that's uh, <laughs> that's what it comes down to right yeah now have you found uh that uh besides making it easier not having like a, a, well having essentially a member or two less have you found, uh, how, how, we'll put it this way, how has the, the audience response been to the people have seen you live going from uh, going from that to the three-piece? Have, has it, have you even noticed or did they respond to it uh, pretty well? To be honest with you, a lot of people said it's better. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, just as good, if not better. Um, the last two gigs that we've done um, at the end of 2016 uh, were basically, they were at... Uh, Andy was with us now, they were his first two gigs, and the first one was kind of a warm-up, which was very, very good, but the official one was basically the last gig of the year, which was in Liverpool, and uh, the funny thing was, the, the turnout was great, the, the, the performance was great, <laughs> what I found funny was that Andy, I, I think, was the most popular person on the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone looked like, we love, he's really great, we were like, well, yeah, of course, that's why he's there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he actually does bass players justice. Right on, yeah. Well, it's 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 uh, it's one one uh, uh, band uh, piece that's hard to fill because I mean uh, it is cliche to say you know that the guitars are down a dozen, but finding a decent basis and that sort of thing is can be trying sometimes because it just they're either not out there 
or the opposite end is they're playing stuff that doesn't suit the band or suit the music you guys are going after. Well, to be honest with you, I will call a guitar part anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely makes a huge difference. I mean, I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, speaking blindly here. Just means like I, I, I haven't been in a big band, a small band, so I'm just not sure how the changes can affect or how how they would work. I mean, sometimes, like from what I've heard from you guys, it's essentially a smooth transition, not too much change. So it's it's always for something like that. It's always a curious curiosity to me when a band picks up, drops a member, or what have you, because. It can, in some cases, it can, can totally change the dynamic of the band. In some cases, it just it kind of stays on the flat and narrow, like you initially inte you initially intended it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in this, in the, the the way the way it's gone now, it's like basically, you know, even though there's less of us in, in the band for when the band first started, it's kind of a case of less is more. Right. So it's been an advantage. I mean, and a, and a major advantage too, because as Joe said, you know, there is more room. And obviously, it's like every, we we all know what, what we're doing. Obviously, Joe's writing the songs and playing like and singing and playing all the guitar parts. But then I'm playing I'm playing all the drums. And between me and Andy, we're doing like the backing vocals. So we know where everything's going. Now we, we you know it's not as if like no not can get confusing or anything really. Right. Well, and the thing is too, like like you said, Colin sing uh, less is more. I mean, and that's that's the thing is it's it's so much more. It can be uh, that much more exciting when people are listening to you and going, "Wow, they're, they're just a three piece, like really." <laughs> and and that's the yeah. thing is, you want to give it that fuller sound, and the the better you accomplish that, the better you know you've got people getting into it and that much more enthusiastic about because realizing that this three piece can make them sound like there's four or five of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? Yeah, it's, Go ahead. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a funny thing because. It, I think I think I think I think it's sometime last year. Someone Tim Van said for the three piece you had a very very loud band. A friend of mine came to see us and she had earplugs in, and the earplugs popped out of her ears because apparently we were that loud, mm. and that was only from three people, which I actually found uh, funny. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Nice. So we're gonna take a quick little break here, and we're gonna play the the teaser track calling that you sent me, and this is the acoustic version of "I'm Gonna Find Out Someday." Joe Symes and Loving Kind. Take this. I'm head over heels, what am I thinking? 